At this day, when we celebrate Africa's most loved ones, 100 of them, and today everyone is excited, we're going to look at how we're going to engage with the best brands today. We're going to be talking about those that were best brands in Africa, then we'll actually reduce them to go and celebrate those in East Africa. And then even here in Uganda, because we are lucky that we are actually launching Brand Africa 100 here in Uganda. So it makes us privileged and happy and excited. So we'll talk about the best brands in Africa, talk about the best brands in East Africa, and we'll go down and launch the ones of Uganda. I'm happy to see so many faces from our guests, from the brands that have that are actually going to be excited today to celebrate their awards. Uh, thank you, everybody across Africa. Uh, just the uh, order of the day, remember, please turn off your microphones uh, during the presentations. Uh, if you have a Q&A, uh, questions and comments can be asked in the Q&A window. So please don't hesitate to just go there and put your questions, uh, your comments, anything. And of course, a recording of the event will be available on YouTube, so you can as well go and watch it there. Um, in the meanwhile, wherever you are, please follow us on Hashtag Africa's Best Brands 2021. Uh, hashtag East Africa's Best Brands 2021. And hashtag Uganda's Best Brands 2021. All of the conversations there. Let's talk about the best brands in Africa. Uh, the methodology today, the program will be a welcome lot for me, as you've had. And uh, our experts, uh, Karin and Tebe, uh, the man behind Brand Africa uh, will take us through the methodology, the insights, and the rankings. I've had so many people asking me about how is it done? How can I be the most admired brand in Africa or in Uganda? Now we're going to see the methodology. We're going to learn how that was done. Then we'll have a Q&A uh, for those who have questions. And then after that, we'll have a panel discussion. Uh, and then we have a keynote address from one of our key uh, guests here, and then we shall close to give their awards. So right now, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Karim, uh, who is going to take us through the methodology. So pay attention, understand how this uh, mechanics are done, and uh, let's celebrate. Thank you. Over to you, Karim. Hello and welcome. Happy Africa Day, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here, and thank you, Tebe, for um, inviting Kantar to be your partner as you do each year for this auspicious event, uh, Brand Africa 100, the 2021 results. So, um, for those of you who don't know Kantar, we are an insights agency with Across Africa, and our real mandate is about understanding people and how they relate to brands, the things they buy, they shop, how they vote, and those kind of things. So today, we are going to take you through the results. So. I'm sure most of you know by now that Brand Africa has been running for many years. We actually, on our 11th year last year, we, sent it, we celebrated the, centine, the, the 10th anniversary, the decade, and we're up for this year's publication in the next couple of minutes. Next slide, please, Tebe. So let me give you a quick recap on how the study is done. Wow, we have really got some of the most amazing coverage this year. 28 countries that have been covered, covering West, East, Southern, North, and Central Africa. 28 countries in all, you can see them listed here, and do look out for your country's results. Uh, we'll be announcing a number of those today, and the rest will be followed up over the next couple of weeks. So how do we actually do the study? 
Well, we're very fortunate to have mobile expert partner, Jeropol, who has got incredible coverage for market research purposes across the African content using mobile. And then Kantar simulates the results and puts them into the Brand Africa 100 index that we come up with. So um, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Caitlin Van Nickwerk from uh, Geopol. Um, she has really coordinated this program and got the results collected in almost all the countries across Africa over the past couple of weeks. If we can move on. So Geopol, this is um, a, a leading market research platform. They've got over 5 million people that are profiled in terms of who they are and that they're willing to partake in giving feedback on the products and services that they use. Geopol conducts over 10 million interviews using mobile devices um, each year, and they really cover the, the vast majority of the mobile population. So in order to qualify for this particular survey, you had to be at least 18 years old. And we did the survey using two key methods. The one is the SMS method, and the other is the mobile web. So some people, we sent them SMSs. They just replied one answer, one answer. Others were able to access it if they had a smartphone. So we cover both smartphones and non-smartphones. So why is mobile so important for data collection um, for a survey of this kind in Africa? First of all, it is the most widely used um, method of accessing the internet in our continent. Right now, we've got over 747 million people in Africa that have got a SIM that is active. And um, basically, this shows us that we've got about almost half of our population has access to the internet using their phone, with 30% of those using it using a smartphone. Um, it is estimated that by um, the next couple, four or five years' time, we'll have 87 million people accessing the, the, the internet via a smartphone. So, as we've already said, Geopol is a fantastic partner for the survey, and they've partnered with us for the last few years, really been um, a great um, partner for the study. And we cover four key areas. The first one is, what is your most admired brand? And here we ask people to give us at least three answers uh, for the survey. And this is where really the brand Africa 100 comes up. They can say a brand from any category whatsoever. The one that they admire and they relate to as, as a consumer. After that, we asked them specifically, now tell us, what is the brand that you admire most that comes from Africa? Um, what's interesting here, as I'll show you later, is many people actually mention global brands here, and they've become such a part of life in Africa that people believe they actually were made in Africa. We move then specifically on to understanding financial services, as financial services is such an important category for unlocking value in our continent. We ask them, what are your most admired financial services brands? And we finish up by asking, what is your most admired media brand? That could be a radio station, a television station, a newspaper, whatever is your media brand. And this year, we added an extra question, given that it was just such a crazy year in 2020. We asked them, which brand do you feel has been most effective in helping during these COVID times? And it's quite interesting to see who comes out there. So we are talking about a mass, a mass of data. Three brands for each one of those questions. This gives us over 80,000 answers, which we have to correlate, bring it all together and make it into something sensible to give to you in terms of an index. We've got over 3,500 individual brands mentioned. And we spend long, long hours sorting out all the brands, coding them into the right categories, making sure that we've covered all the different variations across the continent to ensure it's all working together. After we've done that, what we do is we create a weighted average, um, which takes into account the sample that we've been to, the population size of each country. In other words, the countries that are bigger would have a higher weighting than the countries that are smaller, and this gives us a total picture for Africa. Now, let's be clear, um, to make the list for the top 100, uh, we have specified as a criteria that you have to be recalled in at least one other country than the country where the brand originates. So it cannot only be a country that's local, a brand that's local. Um, when we look at the actual local country list, there we allow the local brands to come through. But for the overall Pan-Africa 100 index, you do have to be mentioned in, um, in, many, in more than one country. So... Before I go into the actual results, I just want to take a step back and say, do you know, I think we need to realize just what a massive role brands played in 2020. COVID impacted so many brands and so many categories. Some were turned on their heads, some were accelerated. 
And if we look at some of the categories that we've seen a really big impact um, on the next slide. What we see is that across the content, continent, we have seen a huge increase in all brands that are related to cleaning, okay, in particular sanitizing. Um, this is not only in Africa, but across the globe, we have seen brands um, that are associated with killing of germs just accelerating in terms of their sales. I mean, I don't think many of us would have expected to have uh, sanitizers in our handbags, in our homes, um, in our offices, but yet this is part of life um, as we live it right now. We see that um, sport had um, was hugely impacted during um, the months of lockdown in which uh, most global events were actually put on hold. Um, this doesn't mean that people lost their connection with sport and you'll see in the results that sport plays such an important role in terms of the brands that people in Africa relate to. Um, in fact, even just watching old games was a sense of comfort and to support to people through the lockdown period, really, really important part of brand building in Africa. Um, for those brands that are operating in an on-premise environment, be it a restaurant, be a bar, these were affected um, quite a lot. Um, many, many categories were not able to sell, those alcohol, soft drink out of home. So they had some really tough months last year. And then what we've seen from a fashion perspective is that um, with people spending more time at home, not necessarily going out, not able to travel, um, they've really moved from more formal um, uh, type wear into more informal, relaxed wear. And we see the brands that are able to offer that really benefiting um, in the results. So before I take you to hand you to, to Tebe to handle hand you the actual results, I thought I'd just give a couple of insights that we see coming through. What we see is that despite the onslaught of COVID last year, our strong brands still live um, in African consumers' minds. It's amazing to see just how resilient and actually quite stable uh, the Brand Africa 100 Index is in 2021. Next slide. Uh, what we see is in almost every country, the local name for um, African fabric comes through as a brand, be it uh, the, sometimes it's just called wax, sometimes Katanga, whatever the, part, the name for, for the African fabric, we see what an important part this is of African identity in such beautiful colors, um, which impact people's lives and, and just make people feel more African. And we see that once again, people are looking for products that are durable, but they don't want to cut short on design. They love the latest flashes, the most beautiful products that are out there. We've seen across many con con um, countries that COVID has really accelerated um, the need for online sales and especially categories like food and grocery delivery have really received a kickstart in terms of um, adoption across the continent. Um, as always, mobile, mobile, mobile. And we've seen that mobile financial services are once again um, playing an important role in, in the financial ecosystem in our continent. As I've already mentioned, football, despite the fact that it was off for a couple of months, one cannot underestimate how important it is. It's the, the, football, the brands that are sponsoring football are coming through in top place in many, many countries across the continent. And despite the fact that we may not have been able to drink in a bar, People love their beer. And we see strong brands like Tusker still raining on and brands like Guinness, which people actually believe is African, even though it actually originates from that tiny little rainy island called Ireland. Of course, the mobile phone, the handset itself, we're seeing the, the, the power of players like Techno who really understand how to do distribution, how to price correctly, and how to offer great products that give enough functionality but at the right price point to be successful in Africa and we'll see how strong this brand is in our index this year. Don't forget Apple is still a loved brand, just can't be afforded. Can't be afforded. And we're seeing some, some brands like Innocent and Katanka coming through um, as really hardy, great, affordable motor vehicles and giving a little bit of a run for the money for the, for the global brands when, in this particular sector. Once again, it's wonderful to see our local uh, conglomerates expanding across the continent. Dengoti, which is now operating in a number of countries. Azam, offering a, a wide range of great food products at an affordable price. 
really understanding how to get the products to consumers in a way that they want, these, these brands continue to showcase uh, their strength in the continent. And let's not forget those that came here first, the global players. We've got brands like Coca-Cola that have been operating in Africa for over 90 years. And once again, we see them being recognized as brands that sit firmly in consumers' hearts. MTN, probably the, the, the telco that's mentioned in more countries than any other. It's incredible how important mobile operators are in our continent and brands like MTN coming through in many, many countries. So as I've said already, what we see is that many international brands are actually perceived to be African. And really the ones that are in particular coming through um, as being perceived to be African are the ones that think locally, they understand how people behave, what people want, but they they implement in a global way, in a very coordinated and successful way. We see brands that have embraced local um, African stars um, under their brand banners, really being rewarded for this. Brands like Nike, who have embraced uh, um, athletes, designers, um, really um, enabled, um, the really like connected with people on a local level. So I hope that gives you a nice little overview of what we're going to see coming up. I'm now going to hand over to the brand guru of Africa himself, Mr. Tebe Ikalafeng, who will give us the findings. Thank you, Karen. That was uh, very, very insightful. Every time I, I, I can't, every time I listen to uh, to these insights, I get so excited about the opportunities uh, in in the continent. So I'm not going to waste too much time today. I'm going to go straight into it because I think you did a fantastic job of painting the picture uh, behind the numbers. So I'm going to give the, I'm going to start in, in I'm going to do the results in three ways. I'm going to start with the All Africa one. As uh, as Joseph said earlier, we are breaking the global results here today. So I'm going to start with the All Africa results, and then I'm going to go to the and, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, to the East African results. Then I'm gonna go to uh, to to the Ugandan results. So here we go, folks. Once again, we are holding fort. So last year we were 13 percent of the top 100. I think COVID brought everything to a standstill. So the, it, it did the same to our results. So our results again standing still. African brands are holding steady at 13 percent. Of the of the most admired brands in uh, in 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 the, in the continent, and you can see where the other African brands are coming from. They're coming from Nigeria, West Africa. They're coming from Southern Africa, South Africa particularly. They're coming from East Africa. We've got a brand from Kenya and a brand from uh, from uh, from Ethiopia. And what are those brands that Africans admire? Number one, number number three, Samsung. Incredible brand. I've always had such great admiration and respect for what Samsung has done, being in every single home. Of course, Adidas is sport. Uh, so current, as alluded earlier, the power of sport. I think the power of sport and the power of connectivity. And these two brands have done it well. The number one most admired brand in the continent for the fourth year in a row, Nike. What an incredible achievement. What an incredible achievement for a brand uh, that started in 1971 and continues to, to, to set the pace in terms of admiration. You see it on taxis, you see it on clothes, you see it on pretty much everywhere. People are taking the swoosh and they put it everywhere else. I always say it's got nothing to do with the six years suspended Nike. Uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You can talk about that at, at some time. But you can see the top 10 most admired brands in the continent, Nike, Adidas, Samsung, Coca-Cola, you know those, every single brand in the top 10 has been around. The only brand that's dropped out of the top 10 is MTN. MTN has dropped out of the top 10. It used to be uh, all the way to number one, number two, uh, number six, seven. Uh, this year it's number 11. Uh, MTN uh, is no longer in the top 10. Uh, so all the global brands are in the top 10. We gotta do some work. We have some work to do here in the continent. Then we looked at uh, what are the most admired African brands. So we asked this question two ways, remember. We look at it when we prompt you. What is your most admired African brand? When you ask that question, the answer is always Dangote, an incredible brand that you find on food, cement, oil, pretty much everywhere. It's the biggest industrial brand in the continent, followed by MTN in more countries than any other, and DSTV. DSTV Beautiful story. We'll talk about it when we, can, when we get to media. Uh, and there's uh, an Ethiopian air. What? 
all the way from into number 51 in the top 100. Now, what's interesting about Ethiopian is that it is the only African airline that's, that managed to survive uh, the, 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 the pandemic. They were transporting PE, uh, PPEs, they were transporting vaccines across the world. Then Safaricom, in, in good news, we just found out uh, two days ago that Safaricom is going to be one the, the rights to be to to be the the telco uh, provider for Ethiopia. Ethiopia, remember, it's the second biggest uh, population in the continent, 110 million. So Safaricom winning there is really going to boost this brand even further. Uh, you will see as the years go, maybe even next year, because uh, they would definitely going to do a great job of it. Shoprite, Jumia, Glow. Now here is a story worth looking at. Batu. Batu is a shoe that was started five years ago. And Batu means shoe in South African parlance. But this shoe has just rocketed everywhere to the most one of the top 10 most admired uh, uh, brands in the, con in the continent, uh, African brands in the continent. The power of marketing, strong association with big celebrities like Somezi, who's well known across the continent with 4 million followers. Partnership with Castle Light, which took the shoe to about six to eight uh, countries in the continent. They created a special shoe. So the brand really rocketed uh, across. Then we ask the question, then we don't ask the question. When you don't ask the question, and you just look at the brands which are African, which come up to the list, MTN. MTN, Dangote, that's their game every year. Dangote, when you prompt it. MTN, when you don't say anything. These are the top 10 most admired African brands, Dangote and MTN. Now we come to media. The story of media is important. It's important as Africans to tell our own story. So how do we tell our story? Well, television, print is a story. I'm always fascinated by the fact that 63% of the, of the global media that reports on the continent, of 63% of them do not have a correspondent in Africa. Yet they're totally telling the story about the continent and they're doing it, well, they're doing it, uh, I can't say well, but let me just say they're doing it. From CNN to BBC, BBC, is just, BBC has been number one for so many years, I think perhaps for the last 10 years. They've got strong uh, connection with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the World Service and all that. Uh, and they got knocked out of number one for the first time in a long time by guess who? DSTV. It is easy to understand why DSTV is number one. DSTV is number one because when COVID locked us in, we now had to go into stream services, Netflix, Showtime, all those kind of brands, Amazon. So that you can get through DSTV. So that catapulted the awareness of, of, DSTV, of DSTV, making it the number one most admired media brand itself. Remember, it's a brand of brands, uh, DSTV itself doesn't itself, it's just a carrier of media brands. So if you look at those brands, BBC remains number one non-African, DSTV number one overall and number one African. Let's talk about financial services. When you look at financial services, apps are rebranded obviously across the continent. Uh, the last couple of years, a massive uh, millions, multiple hundreds of millions of dollars spent in rebranding apps are converting it into converting the Barclays, uh, 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 the Barclays around the continent into apps. First rent uh, from, uh, from Nigeria, stalwart of the of, of, of branding of, of banks it's been here ever since but i tell you this bank gt bank came back to number one last year and has retained their position very strong in uh, investment in digital very strong investment in customer service that's what makes gt bank the bank that uh that that as they as they as they're shaping themselves they're shaping themselves into the bank of the future the 10 uh, financial services brands in the continent, here's the beauty, all African, all African brands. I think that's something we can be proud of, that our money is in our pockets. So the top 10 brands from GT Bank, First Bank, APSA, UBA, Equity, Echo Bank, Bank of Africa, Standard Bank, Capitec, just came into this voted one of the strongest brands in the world, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, strongest brand in the world, and Zenith from Nigeria. So this year, as Karen said, we then ask an important question. We ask the question, what is the brand, which brands were, do you admire that you believe was really helpful during the COVID, during COVID? Well, if you open television, you read newspaper, who? World Health Organization was the number one brand that you hear about every day. 
whether it's how they missed the pandemic signs or whether it's what they're doing to try and get Africa to get uh, Africa to participate in the vaccines without without these uh, incredible uh, exorbitant uh, intellectual property restrictions, and then MTN donated to nine nine million vaccines to nine African countries, so seven or nine African countries. I think they spent about two hundred and fifty million dollars or something like that, just giving away vaccines. So you can see that during the COVID, uh, or during during COVID, some brands really uh, came to the fore. Out of the top twenty five, I think about eighty percent of the brands were in private sector. So it really shows how important the private sector is in uh, in, in 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 being an active uh, active citizen and helping create a better life. So you can see throughout all those, I think there's really, uh, or there's Wu and then there's UNICEF uh, and there's Red Cross, which are the only quote unquote non-private sector. But you can see all the mobile brands are in. Every single mobile brand in the continent did something for COVID. So by region, number one, Central Africa, Samsung. Number one, North Africa, Nike. Number one, South Africa, Southern Africa, Adidas. Number one in Western Africa, Samsung. And number one in East Africa, Nike. So these are the top brands uh, by, 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 by the region. And we can see where we are putting our money. We're putting our money into, into consumer, into, in, into consumer, into consumer category. We're putting our money into electronics. We're putting our money into automobiles. So we are continuing to, the, the, the categories have pretty much held steady uh, in terms of where, where the money, where the money is. The consumer has increased by a couple of points more than any, any other. Can understand we're all at, at home. So we had to spend a bit more money on the on the consumer bit. But what's interesting, brands like luxury pretty much retained their uh, retained their, their their share of uh, their share of brands about eight percent or so, uh, and um, and apparel pretty much maintained their share as well. Karen spoke about earlier about some brands that think when you ask consumers what is your most admired African brand, the number one brand one of the number one brands that they mentioned they said Coke it's African. Nike, Techno, Nestle, Adidas, Flisco, Samsung, Airtel, Vodacom, Vodacom, and Guinness. So how interesting is that? I think Karen made the point earlier about how these brands really have become part of who we are and have invested in building very deep relationships with African consumers to the extent where we think they are African. So when you look at by category, who are the category leaders? Nike leads in sports, Samsung is in, in, um, in electronics, Guinness in alcohol, if you're paying airline, DSTV Media, Nivea in personal care, Nestle in our uh, consumer non secular luxury, which, which has been in for the last 10 years in a row in the top 10. Google, because we had to search for, for the cure for, 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 for COVID. ShopRite gets the biggest supermarket in the continent, and Ambesa. East Africa, coming from Ethiopia, Toyota, everything is going right, uh, and, and MTN. So if you look at country by country, 23 of the top 20, of the 28 countries, 23 are non-African. We have some work cut out for us. Our job is to create and to build brands and to support brands that we admire in the continent, in our different countries. But it doesn't mean that you have to reject international brands. It means that you have to give them a run for their money. You need to create, we need to create great brands that will compete with them because the better our brands, the better they become as well, the better the non-African brands become in the continent. Starting this weekend, that's the cover of the African business that you'll see. You'll see the theme across that. The theme is two things. It's vaccines and Africa Free Trade Continental Agreement, which came into play this year, uh, trying to drive intra-Africa trade from 18% to 50% by 2030. That is in nine years' time. That we need to try and do in nine years what we haven't been able to do in 50 years. But if there's anybody who's a great optimist, it is an African. Now let's just roll our sleeves and we do just that. And these are your top 100 brands in the, in the, in the continent. So now let's move down to Uganda. We're so proud to be uh, to partner again with our with, with our good friends, Publix Africa and uh, Uganda in Investment Authority. We are in, uh, in Uganda that we are able to tell the story 
bridge of friends in Uganda. Let's look at those friends. Number three, overall, most admired brand. Doesn't matter where it comes from. Pepsi, Airtel, everything. But what, it's the real thing, rather. Um, it's the real thing, Coca-Cola. What a dominant brand. 100 years in the continent, it's part of who we are. The top 10 brands in Uganda, Coca-Cola, Airtel, Pepsi, Nike, Adidas, Apple, Samsung, Gucci, Mokwano, Techno. So you can see Mokwano is the highest ranking African brand in the top 10 in, uh, in, in, uh, in Uganda. So then let's talk about those African brands in the continent, in, in Uganda. When you, ask, when you ask Ugandans, what is your most admired African brand? They said African brands, Nile. We know Nile did very well last year as well. They said Nile. But I think, you know, with COVID and a bit of restrictions, maybe people were not so happy that they couldn't get a hold of their Nile as easily as they used to. So Nile, number three. Nitel, number two. The number one brand, I already told you, Bukwana. Bukwana has been a mainstay of the table for many, many years. And what an incredible brand uh, that, keeps, uh, uh, that keeps dominating this brand. They're doing the right things and they're doing them consistently. Top 10 brands, all the way down to Centenary Bank, uh, Renzori Water, uh, Bell, Ream, <coughs> apologies, uh, Dangote. Dangote. Dangote always finds its way. If you look at the two brands, at Bitco out of Kenya and Dangote, two dominant brands. Dangote dominates West Africa and the rest of the continent. Bitco dominates East Africa. And those are the two brands which disrupted that are uh, a, a clear laid by, by Ugandan brands. So we look at what is the most admired local media brands in, uh, in Uganda. Bukeda TV and NTV, number one, again, NBS TV, superb television station, greatly branded, do an amazing job of, 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 of telling stories, Ugandan story, and of marketing itself. Uh, they're the brands, uh, as, as you can see. What I, what I absolutely loved about the brands uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from Uganda in media is there is a combination of, of local language, regional, regional television, upstart, newcoming uh, radio stations. I absolutely love that because it means Ugandans are proud of their country, they're proud of their language, and they, are, they want to tell their own stories themselves. So great, um, great uh, uh, diversity of the media brands. When you come to financial services, you got Suiko, you got DFCU. DFCU always does well in these rankings. The number one though, Centenary, one of the finest financial services brands in our continent, certainly in our region. Uh, Leeds, I think it won again last year, was ranked. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't always say win, but I say it is preferred by customer, where it's winning the customer battle, I guess one could put it. We can look at the top 10 brands uh, in, the, um, uh, in, uh, in, in Uganda, uh, local brands, uh, very strong financial services, a mixture of different types of, 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 of brands, from insurance to cooperatives to, um, to banks. Uh, so that's also beautiful to see that our money is in our pockets. The most admired brand during COVID in Uganda. I think you can see an interesting thing. Centenary, Airtel, number one, MTN. Look at the top. Look, look at the top five brands, all private sector brands. It means that the private sector is really playing its part uh, when we need it uh, in the continent, and certainly when we need it in uh, in, in Uganda. Number one, non-African on that list, you'd say it's Airtel. Number one, Ugandan, you'd say it's Centenary. Number one across board, MTN. So. To close, what can we conclude? Well, we haven't lost ground, but we're still low at 13%. Because of, because of COVID, we tended to spend a lot of our times at uh, internally focused. So I mean, 63% of the survey was done by how we made it in Africa, and they said 63% Africans prefer the local. 
But during COVID, we really got to see that, that the focus has been a local, not just, uh, not just in Africa, not just in Uganda, but everywhere. Because where else can you go? You couldn't go anywhere else. So COVID was a disaster in one area because it really disrupted economies. But in many ways, it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity because it got us to think, what can we do for ourselves? So some of the things, some of the areas that we really need to keep building on, and I put it on same as last year is uh, the single African air transport, transport market. But then, of course, at this stage, it is Ethiopian, South African Airways, Kaput, history, Egyptian uh, history. Many of the airlines are, are in the continent. They really, really, really are going to struggle to come back and get the market share that they did. Uh, Ethiopian has consolidated, but we need more than Ethiopian air because I don't think it, uh, one airline can 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 cover the whole continent. So we need to liberalize the the, the airways because it's, it's a problem. Uh, you know, um, having traveled to every country on the continent, uh, I always found it difficult that I had to leave the continent to come back to the continent. We need to close that. We need to. We, we need to see how we're going to get 50% um, uh, uh, into Africa uh, by 2030. But the only way we're going to do that is if we create and we drive Made in Africa brands. So it means also we need to get our passport because we can't be putting 30, 40 uh, visas which I got to just move around the continent. We need to look at the positive side of COVID and ask ourselves a question. We should be creating our own vaccines, our own pharmaceutical companies. And that Ladies and gentlemen, are the results uh, for the 2021 Brand Africa 100, Africa's best brands across the continent, West Africa, East Africa, and Uganda. Joseph. Amazing. Really, really amazing. I mean, it's kind of shocking, but fantastic uh, presentation. And I'm sure it raises questions right now. I mean, you were talking about brands that actually were most helpful during COVID. What, what, what can we say about, because you see many of them seem to be uh, non-African brands. Is there something that we can tell our local brands about brand purpose? Uh, what, what are we missing? <laughs> well, I well, I think it's a mixture. I think when you look at the, when you look at the, the top brand, the top 25, um, it's quite a mixture. Most of them, you've got the you've got the UNICEF, you've got the Tetos, you get all those. But I think when you look at the local ones, you can see that uh, brands like Centenary. Uh, you can see. It's, I think it's, it's a mixture. But I think what it says is that brands need to know that for, for brands to survive into the into the into the next century, as consumers have said, more than seventy percent of the consumers said they will give up a brand if they believe it is not contributing to the well-being of society. So it means, like you say, brands need to be very purposeful and contribute to society. Excellent. Uh, if I may just take you back today uh, to last year, for example, in the financial sector, we had the opportunity to celebrate uh, most admired brands uh, in Uganda, but also most admired Ugandan brand. So this time around, we see, uh, for example, in the media sector, there's only one most admired brand. Can you please uh, just el elaborate a little bit, shed some more light on that? In uh, in in the, top, in the top 100. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, you, you know, I think uh, the challenge for for media, and I always say, the challenge for uh, for for media has always been the investment that's required uh, to invest in in, uh, in in the media. I think where the global brands are. Um, uh, dominating us is they've got the resources, they've got the investment, but most importantly, they've got the training. They train uh, people. They train their people in how to tell stories. Whether we like the story, uh, it's, uh, it's it's a different it's a different story uh, on its own. Uh, they invest a lot into training of the journalists. They invest a lot into resourcing them. They put in the resources across the continent. They uh, they are uh, although I said 63 percent don't have the uh, cor correspondence, but they are certainly in the major capital because you can find them. So what we need to do from an African perspective, we need to invest a lot in our own African media. Uh, because who else can tell us your story better than yourself? I think it's Chinu Achebe said, until the lion learns how to tell its story, tales of the hunter will always be glorified. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. So since we're dealing with COVID and, uh, and the African uh, continent of free trade area uh, as our theme, and because I have my colleagues across from Tanzania, 
and my colleagues across from Kenya. Uh, as you know, we have um, uh, Joanne Wangi uh, Yelbert from uh, PMS Africa. And we also have, uh, hi Joanne, and we also have uh, Lingi uh, from TZ. Now, my question is, how can we work together uh, as different markets uh, in East Africa or Africa uh, to grow brands uh, so that we can uh, depend on each other, but also make sure that the brands are growing there is, and are represented there is across actually, Africa? There is such an important question. I think what, what we need to do is we need to, we need to identify our relative strengths. So Kenya, Kenya needs to say, we are very good at telecommunications. Let us be the center for telecommunication. Uganda needs to say we are very good in food. We need to be the center for food. Uh, Tanzania needs to say we've got great uh, tourism product or, or whatever our product it is. So we need to find our competitive advantages and we need to go back to the, to the beginning. Remember what we used to do in the beginning? There was a concept called battery. What is battering about? Battering was what you do best uh, and uh, that we can exchange. And of course, the exchange are being the, are being the currency. So to me, uh, for, for the Africa future continental um, uh, area agreements to, uh, to work, it's only going to work when we don't trample each other, uh, when we focus on our relative strengths and we contribute to the, big, to the bigger pot. But of course, um, it, then, it, it doesn't mean that uh, we, we, we leave one, one, one each, each other not to, with no competition. We still need a competition because what competition does is it makes us better, it pushes us to create better products. Excellent, excellent answer. And I'm sure that uh, uh, my friends, uh, my African partners and friends in Kenya and Tanzania have had that. I, I'd like to extend some of these questions uh, to you. Uh, uh, let me start with Joan. Joan is the CEO for PMS Africa which is a marketing group agency, and she's been handling many brands, excellent brands in Kenya, uh, a very big market, I must tell you. Uh, John, tell me, how, how do you feel about these announcements? What do you think, uh, what, what's your report on this? Okay, first of all, thank you so much, and congratulations, Joseph and Bebe. Um, as I listened in, one of the things I found fascinating Yes. is the fact that the top brands tend to be exactly the same across the continent. Think Coca-Cola, Pop-Up, Nike. It was amazing for me. And the one thing I also found very sad is that out of 28 brands, only five are African in the top brands. And so the need for us as marketers to do our work, because if you look, I personally feel very strongly that the reason a lot of the international brands are leading is simply because they've told their story well. So we need to tell our story well. We need to put resources behind our strong brands and work complementary, collaboratively, rather than directly competitive or as rivals. I also like very much what uh, we talked about, as Sebe has said, and Joseph as well, uh, on the African free trade area. Looking at what your competitive advantage is and focusing on it, as opposed to trying to fight every battle that your competitor is winning. That's one other area that we need to look at as Africans. So that if, if Joseph is very good at brand management, I let him do the brand management and I do the advertising. And, you know, the same way we work as partners, Joseph, you know. So I think as a continent, we need to start wearing the, the lens of brotherhood and collaborative rivalry, then that way we will get much further with our brands. I mean, the research is absolutely spot on. I truly have enjoyed listening to the, to the feedback. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. I think you're very right. I mean, when we collaborate, when, I mean, East Africa, for example, I'm here, I mean, Uganda and Kenya, we can do different parts of one job. That's a fantastic mm -hmm. thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, Lee, uh, from GZ, he is also a, 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 a guru in marketing, uh, heads the, the fund marketing uh, uh, group, and uh, he's also working with extremely big brands in GZ. We're happy to have you here, Lady. Can you tell us, how, what do you think about the results? Have you seen any brands that you are not really surprised about? Uh, 
I, I don't know if you can hear us. I'm sorry, Joseph. I was on mute. You have me now. So what I was saying, uh, pretty much as um, you can see, um, the results are pretty much what we expected mostly. Just like John said, what um, also Teddy said. Uh, so we see the dominance of the global brand. And uh, the biggest question that the African brand need to ask themselves is like, why, why are we seeing the same trend? So as a marketer, um, uh, we need to appreciate the fact that, you know, African market is um, young, vibrant, deep cultured, but it's vast and, and diversified. Now, how are we remain relevant in this specific market and be able to take advantage of um, us understanding this market? And um, as um, Joan said, like, how do you um, face the competitive advantage of one brand being born in one specific region and be able to collaborate and uh, spread across the market. So um, one of the area that I feel that as a brand, we really need to invest is uh, information. As we understand uh, the global brand, uh, because of the advantage of them uh, being uh, in the market for a while, and uh, having a lot of return of investment, they have a capacity to invest in this specific market and uh, understand what they have to do to remain relevant in the different different markets. As most of them, they, 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 what they do, they, uh, they don't think to grow up, but they adopt and execute their marketing tactics and strategy locally. So, um, so this is a big challenge for African brand. I think it's a good learning, and they have to learn how to move fast since this is very young, young market. And um, the, the biggest part of our population really learn very fast, adapt very fast, uh, and that is the way to go. Excellent. I think that's a fantastic uh, submission. And, uh, because uh, I don't see Morris, uh, since he's the investment authority board chairperson. And you know, Uganda Investment Authority, for example, is the uh, agency that actually cares about uh, uh, brands, both local and international. It would be best if you could actually talk with us and tell us uh, some of the initiatives, even which other countries can borrow from, uh, which are being done in Uganda. Uh, he will have his time to make the keynote speech, of course, but I just wanted to uh, invite him. Uh, there might be some words of wisdom that Morrison can uh, give both to Kenya and Uganda and the rest of the African countries, because you being uh, the chair, chairman board of uh, Uganda Investment Authority, uh, there are many initiatives that you actually take into to make sure that the local brand and the international brands that invest in this market are actually being supported. So, uh, what's your work with them? Uh, and, and given the results, uh, what are your thoughts? I uh, thank you, Morrison, please. No, I think the quick thing is for me to um, congratulate the brands that have kept uh, very consistent. And they want to really agree with what uh, some of you have been saying, uh, that I think the future of Africa uh, is into the three eyes, uh, which for me is strong institutions, uh, is integration, uh, to really ensure that uh, you have an integrated market uh, and that Africa, instead of just competing, but it is collaborating. Um, and of course, the other key challenge is that uh, you have continent where you know we almost produce same things market same things brand same things so i think the view is uh, how do we specialize okay and i think a lot of government would be how uh, you know being the wind beneath being the wind beneath the wings of those that are trying to fly uh, such that we can have dominant of african brands on the continent but also uh, african brands beyond the continent because, for example, how will Samsung build, which is, you know, number three top brand uh, in the world? It is because this, uh, the South Korean government, you know, did very strong investment, nurtured Samsung, provided the financing, provided the G2G strategic partnership, the government-to-government -government partnership, and managed to accentuate it uh, across the globe. So I think Africa will need to collaborate, really use game theory, collaborate, while competing you know, for the benefit of the people. I think for now, let me just say that, say that I will deep dive uh, into more other things while we uh, taking on a key. 
Excellent, excellent. excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Morrison. Morrison is our investment uh, authority uh, chairman there. And uh, he's a new breed uh, in, in, in this uh, market. We trust him. He's already in Uganda. And uh, over and over again, we'll be hearing more coming on the side. I want to give you the opportunity to meet your keynote speech now. Uh, if that's okay. Uh, Karen or Hasna? I, I think it's okay. Uh, Chairman Morris, just go. Yes. On. Can you hear me? Just go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and I congratulate the dominant brands, especially in Africa, and those that are trying to make it big. Uh, as you know, uh, Africa's middle class is now 170 million people and expanding. And as a result, Africa is set to evolve from an increasingly important sourcing hub into one of the most attractive consumer markets and counterparts for agile brands to the rest of the world. Africa will require relentless innovation, enabling environment, and deepened integration in order to move its brands from good to great. Uh, Africa, as you all know, is endowed with almost immeasurable uh, resources, natural resources and people, and we continue to really discover even more natural resources. Africa is also endowed with beauty and pristine ecosystems. So the task for brands in Africa is how to tap into this and deliver ambassadorship of this great continent. This will build a strategic fit and resilience and the resilience of the African brand. At Uganda's investment authority, with guidance from President Museveni and rollout from the national development plans, we have identified strategic sectors that can tap uh, and that can be tapped and leveraged by you know the innovators, uh, the already resilient brands uh, for purposes of you know expansion. We have very resilient and thriving trade subsector. We have agriculture and agro-processing. Uh, we have tourism, uh, which is really, of course, impacted by COVID, but now rebounding with local tourism. We have power and energy. Uh, we have excess electricity at the moment. We have oil and gas. We have mines and other minerals and of course, information communication technologies. Governments all over Africa, and especially so for Uganda, have a key role to create an environment that nurtures and springs brands into the world. Like I mentioned, Samsung, the number three most admired brand in the world, was initially nurtured by the South Korean government. African governments will therefore need to work with the private sector and universities create our own version of Samsung in our key strategic sectors as outlined above. African brands, ladies and gentlemen, will do great, will do very well in Uganda. And this is why. Uganda is stable and secure, providing an umbrella that offers security of personal and property with the lowest crime rates on the continent. Investors are also allowed 100% ownership of their businesses. We have in Uganda an effective state and government, evidenced by the way Uganda handled COVID-19 with very low fatalities uh, and cases compared to the rest of the world. Uganda is also strategically located in East Africa, accessing a growing and huge regional market of over 160 million people. And as you know, Uganda Airlines was launched and is delivering direct flights uh, to most of the nations on the continent and beyond. This is therefore very important for the advancement of brands uh, on the continent. Uganda has access to a rapidly growing middle-income domestic market, and Uganda is energized and a vibrant economy that, that, grow, that really grows consistently at over 6%. Even with COVID, we are expected to rebound and grow by over 40 percent, by over four percent uh, in the coming year. Investors in Uganda benefit from the liberal economic and foreign exchange policies, and investors enjoy a range of investment incentives that also include 
75% of import duty reduction on factory equipment, uh, depreciating startup costs over four years, and 100% tax deduction on research and training costs, as well as uh, mineral exploration costs. And additionally, 100% of training costs are also deductible on a one-time basis. So investors engage in export-oriented production and you know, delivery of brands and domination of markets uh, across Africa and the world would enjoy a 10-year tax holiday and therefore be able to harness abundant opportunities for partnerships uh, with investors across the continent. And investors are welcome to exploit the abundant oil and gas discoveries in the country. Recently, Uganda signed a major deal uh, with Tanzania, with Total, and Sinop that is going to deliver over $15 billion uh, in the next years. And this is a huge opportunity, really, for investors in Africa and across the world to come and locate in Uganda. U Uganda Investment Authority is delivering infrastructure in industrial parks and innovation and incubation centers across the country provide you know a very very good environment facilitated environment for investors and this is coupled with now a one-stop center that we operate you know that quickens registration licensing and other business support uganda has you know a you know a melting pot really of affordable and well-educated and skilled young people that would support businesses and brands Finally, I once again congratulate the best brands and encourage emerging and youth-driven businesses to learn from the greatest brands and advance. Uganda Investment Authority and the government of Uganda will be at hand to offer support and continue uh, partnering uh, uh, with investors. But I also thank Brands Africa uh, for this opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you so much. Those are fantastic words. Uh, Uganda, honestly, I think we are heading places. Uh, I want to thank all of you, uh, Karen, Hasna. Thank you, Tebe. Brand Africa is doing great things for us across Africa. We're building brands. We're happy to make sure that we grow and be like those uh, non-African brands that are out there still uh, leading. Uh, thank you, our guests, all of you who are out there. I hope you're still following us. Please don't hesitate to continue making your comments. Until next year, God bless you and fantastic. All the best.